The first question up here in the upper left-hand section of your card is a question that has to do with oughts and shoulds. Now, we all live with oughts and shoulds, like ought to clean that house, ought to, should make those great meals. Ought, yeah, I got it, I got it. But oughts and shoulds. We have a sense of what we ought to do. We know about how fast we ought to drive when we're on the highway. We know about how we ought to dress to uh, go to some fine restaurant. We kind of know how we ought to behave in public. We have to have oughts and shoulds. Well, when you get into a subject like stewardship, there is a sense of what I probably ought to do. So what I want you to write up here is your answer to the question, what I ought, O-U-G-H-T, to give. And I'm talking here monetarily, not time, not talent, but monetarily. What I ought to give to the glory of God or to the kingdom of God or to the things of God or to God's agenda or however you want to word it, but how, what I guess I probably ought to give as a Christian and as a steward to God's agenda. And I would like for you to put that in dollar amounts. If you don't want to put it in dollar amounts, put it in phrases that mean something to you, uh, terms, concepts, whatever, and, and try to get in touch with what you think you probably ought to give at least as a Christian and as a steward to God's agenda, not our own. So having looked at that, what would you be willing to share with the rest of the people in the room uh, with reference to this question? What are some things that came to mind for you? Well, when I think about it, I guess I probably ought to uh, what? Give me something. Tithe. What? Tithe. Okay, I guess I probably ought to tithe. What else came to mind for you? Missionaries, missionaries as well. What else kind of came to mind? And these aren't trick questions. I just want to know what you think. I mean, it, we're going to take whatever your answers are and, and try to use that springboard into theology. Youth. So, huh? To the youth. Give to youth. youth ministries okay. Give to youth ministries. All right. Uh, give spiritually. But I want to keep it focused on the money because that's the one that trips us up so much. Um, yeah, we've got tithe, so I could say that again. And maybe Let me ask a question about the tithe just while we're doing it. Is that before or after taxes? What would you say? <laughs> I mean, as long as we're raising the question, is that, is that should we be, what, what do we think we need to do? I think it's important if you want to look at that kind of thing and really wrestle with it to go back to your authorities. When I talk about um, the tithe and scripture and tradition and all that, uh, it's important to know there, there really was not a time in 98% of the life of the history of the people of God uh, that the, the, there wasn't a challenge about tithing. There, were, there was always a taxation issue, you know that, whether you were oppressed by an outside authority or government or whether you were running the, the government under David and Solomon. There, were always, there was always a tax issue. And so that's a deal. You can also say that, that if you go all the way back to Abraham, he tied to Melchizedek. So it goes all the way back to Abraham, the tithe there. But here's the thing that's interesting. Scripture doesn't really do gross net. And when you look at tradition, it doesn't really answer the question gross net. And so when you start to wrestle with something like this, I think we need to sort of sort that out for ourselves. What do we think we think? And that's an important thing because if we're going to get serious about the theology of stewardship, we need to be honest and truthful before God of what we think we think. And I think it's important that we really wrestle with it ourselves because there are other things that you can find in the Scripture. And sometimes those things get overemphasized to a point that really the Lord doesn't ask that, but we think it up and it actually becomes problematic. You all remember the stories in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John when Jesus was confronting the scribes and the Pharisees over things like what he did on the Sabbath. And they'd get their nose out of joint because he'd heal the sick on the Sabbath or he'd do something on the Sabbath. They had so many rules and regulations. 
413 actually. And they it had to do with what exactly you can and can't do almost all the time. And the Lord had to challenge that. And he did things on the Sabbath that the rules and regulations didn't apply to. And he began to really challenge our propensity to say more than really the Lord says. The issue for us is what we think we ought to give and not get into issues about how to keep hold of the Sabbath. Does that mean go to church in the morning, early service, hopefully no music, in and out in 31 minutes, and, and I did it? Uh, does it mean go to, no, you have to go to church, and then you also have to go to the adult class because it always goes, okay, now I've done, no. You also have to come out in some services in some communities. You have to come out that night for that Sunday night, blow your socks off evangelistic thing. What does it mean to keep holy the Sabbath? Everybody's going to have to wrestle with that, and probably everybody has an answer to that. I want to apply it to the subject like the tithe. Is that before or after taxes? And when you think about it, just write down in the upper left-hand section of the card what you think. You don't have to share it with me. But what would, how would you answer that? It's really important. All right, the second question I would like you to answer in the upper right-hand section of the card has less with theory to do and more with reality. And this is, that question is what, in fact, I really do give. I'm talking monetarily, to the glory of God, or to the kingdom of God, or to the extension of His kingdom, or to God's agenda, or to the Lord's work, or whatever and however you want to word it. But what, what would you be your answer for the really do give question? And I know you're sitting next to somebody that might have roving eyes, and you, you may want to put that in code, or you may want to put it in some kind of general phrase. You may want to put it in something that you know what you think you think, but you may not be all that excited about someone else knowing what you really do give. It's just, it's just one of the quirks and qualities of our life in the church. That's a very, very personal thing uh, for a lot of people, what they really do give. Okay, but try to pull it together. And, and I, don't wanna, I don't wanna get into, were well, you talking about just give to the local parish? Or are you talking about give to other good stuff all over the place that Jesus likes? And I would want you to do it any way you want to. These are not trick questions. I would, have, I would want you to, to bottom line it though. At the end of the day, how much really do you let go of to God's agenda? Now I'm not being dismissive of the local congregation because I do know that the local congregation is the primary, not the only, but the primary place you hear the Word of God proclaimed. And it's the primary, not the only, but it's the primary place that you come together for corporate worship. And it's the primary, not the only, but the primary place that you come to receive the sacraments. It's the primary, not the only, but it's the primary place that you grow in discipleship for you and your children, teenagers, and the like. It becomes a primary, not the only, but a primary focal point of your life in Christ and in His community, His body, the church. So I think it is an important component. I'm not trying to be dismissive of what you really do give to the local parish. I'm just trying to say, I don't care if you glob together a number of things that you feel the Lord is leading you to, to give to, give to it. But I just want you to try to figure out what, in fact, would be your bottom line of what, in fact, you really do give to the things of God, the kingdom of God, the, ag the agenda of God, or however you, you like to word it, and write it down in some phrase or some way that you kind of know what you know. You've figured it out. And if you don't know, write, you know, I don't know. I could tell you what I paid for my last car. I could tell you what I paid for my last pair of shoes. I, for the life of me, I don't really know if I know. I don't ever, ever try to figure it out until income tax time. So, I, you know, just be honest and try to sort it out. And if you would, give me, even if in vague and general terms, give me uh, some of the answers that you'd be willing to share with a larger group. Well, I guess I really do give, what? Okay, I really do give 10%. What else would be an answer that comes to mind for you? Special offerings. Special offerings. What else comes to mind? Okay, I really do give not enough. Anything else comes to mind? I'm just trying to get you, to, I'm trying to engage you, frankly, because we're going to do theology with all of this. Um, 
Would it be fair to say that some, y'all are all somewhere between? Yes. Gifts, gifts to personal friends or those in need. Oh, gifts to those, for, to friends in need or, or whatever. Okay, those are the kinds of things that came to mind. And y'all are probably, everyone in the group is somewhere between 10% and not enough and everything in between. So I'm just trying right now to get you to, to think it through. Well, come back over here and look at what on the left-hand side of the card, what you wrote with reference to what you think you ought to give. And I would like for you to try to help me or help yourself really figure out uh, your authority for that. You know, we, we say tithe or missionary aid or youth ministry or spiritual or whatever you think you think with what you think you ought to give. I want you to try to sort out your authority for that. We, uh, we don't just come into the world thinking that we ought to drive 55 miles an hour on the highway. Uh, if pushed, I could tell you why I think 55 miles an hour, not 95, not 25. I can tell you my authority for that. What, if somebody said, how, how do you think you ought to dress to go to the finest restaurant in Little Rock? I could tell you what I think. I probably ought to wear a coat and tie or something like that. And if you pushed me, I could tell you why I think I think that. I'm, I, you've written something in the upper left-hand section of the card with reference to what you guess you probably ought to do as a Christian, as a follower of Jesus Christ with reference to giving. I simply want you to answer the question, what makes me do what I do? Or where did I get that idea? We have, if we think, we can remember. Where did I get that idea that I ought to give whatever it is I think I ought to give? And write your answer right below it. Where did you pick that up? Where, where's that coming from? You can get it from the tooth fairy. Somebody, you've picked it up somewhere and try to identify it. Why, why do I think I ought to give that? What are some of the answers that you would, would uh, not mind sharing with reference to where you got that idea. Okay, you would say the Bible, prayer to God, or the Holy Spirit. For me, it's the vision and mission of the ministry. The The vision. of the mission. Where else did you get these ideas? Examples of other people. The what? Examples of other people. Okay, other people, examples. Some people put parents, that kind of, uh, some people don't. Yeah. Well, anyway, it, it could go on and on, but I, I'm just trying to get you to, to try to sort that out. Kind of, where did you get that idea? What, what, what's making you think that what you think you think with reference to what you ought to give? Uh, what makes you inclined that way?